What's up guys, Patrick Gaming Joey here. I just wanted to share the uh, method or the quickest method for activating native NVMe support in Windows 11. Now I'm on Windows 11 2.5 H2 and for a quick uh, explanation for anyone that hasn't heard about it, basically NVMe drives have been using an older hard disk based standard. Like that's just a layman's explanation. And that just means that the CPU has more overhead like it has to uh, emulate uh, to to allow the NVMe to function properly, um, like best way to put it. But basically, it adds CPU overhead or processing cycles because of the older standard being emulated for the NVMe, you know, SSD NVMe newer standards. And Enterprise has full native NVMe support uh, recently. I think Windows 11 Enterprise or something like that. Windows something Enterprise. Um, allowed that and that also carries over to windows 11 for home users for desktops but it's not native yet like they have uh, not native um it's not through microsoft updates yet so you can you can it's, it's already in the os like you can enable it but they haven't pushed it through officially so in other words you can activate it with a registry tweak and i'll show you that tweak right here it is adding these three values into this directory and the quickest way to do that is I'm going to copy paste this into the comments and then all you got to do is you know highlight it uh, copy it and then go to start create a notepad file you know like just like this here and go to file save as and then take away the txt and change it to dot reg so it becomes a registry file and you can uh, you can name name it whatever you want because you can delete it after um, and then after you've saved it as a dot reg file you just run it so um, just double click it and it'll it'll say do you want to add these values to the registry you click yes and then to reverse the process you can edit the same file and just change all of these to a zero or you can go to registry and navigate to the location and just delete the overrides folder if there's nothing else in it if it's only default and the three values you can just delete the whole thing and then reboot and at the same time, when you enable it, you also need to reboot for it to come into effect. And what this does is it reduces CPU overhead by making the NVMe support native. So it's drive, native driver support. And then that will also change your device manager location. Instead of under disk drives, it'll be shifted to storage disks. As you can see here, this is my um, Lenovo LN950 4 terabyte NVMe. It's a PCIe um, 4.0 drive. And then this is the before and after. It is very minuscule. But in some situations, uh, it could be it could be good. Okay, so here's the before and after, and you can see it's very minuscule, but there is it is consistent. So the reads went up by 100 m megabytes a second. The writes went up by 200. Uh, these two both went up by very small amounts. The random 4K, and I used the these are the settings I used. It was real world and read write. The peak probably does go up even higher, like there would be a larger latency difference under higher load because that's what it's made for. It's made for high. It exceeds the it, it allows the NVMe to be fully maximized far better than the default um, S, S, SCSI method, which is the legacy method. Um, and then this may carry over into gaming when you've got lots of stuff going on and not necessarily because it's improving the NVMe performance, but because when you've got an intensive scenes and then something has to access the disk, uh, such as, you know, level traversal and you're in the middle of combat, then the CPU has less, it's, it's being utilized less by the, the legacy layer of the drive access. So theoretically, your 0 0.1, uh, yeah, 0.1% lows should go up. So just take a look at that again. And the latency, it's a, it's literally just like a 1ms latency improvement um, across read and write. But then this was under the real world test, not the peak test. So the peak test could have been higher. I should have done that. But in hindsight, the main point is that it's an improvement. So there's like it's like a win-win. Uh, the only downside is that if you run apps that, uh, for example, uh, NVMe storage apps for the brand, so like a Samsung uh, software for your Samsung NVMe, for example, it will be using the legacy layer access. 
So that software may not detect the disk disk anymore because it's under native access. So it's, it's a different pathway for the software to access the disk. And meaning that some apps may either not detect the disk or they'll detect the older and the newer version. So you'll get the SCSI, you'll get the disk coming up twice with slightly different um, labeling names, like internal names. But other than that, um, I didn't make a backup or anything because I read about like what it, the biggest risks and it's mainly to do with the software access layers. But in general, for like gaming and all that other stuff, just for general use, if you're not using specific software to access the disks um, or to read the disks, um, you can see here the crystal disk mark obviously worked fine. And um, yeah, so, and you can reverse the process. You just undo or delete the registry keys and reboot. So thanks for watching and I hope that helps you guys out.